Hello, friends. It is so nice to see you on a Tuesday. Greetings from New Jersey. Uh, hopefully the weather is as nice where you are, where it is where we are. So I'm um, looking forward to getting things going in the next minute or two. Like any good uh, room setting, I'm going to wait a second because the second I say we're ready to go, I'm sure I'm going to hit admit about four more times. That's either my bad luck or just how it works. I know, Jen, it looks like you're helping me as well, and I, I do appreciate that too. So we're going to get going. Channing, good to see you. We need to catch up soon. Give me a call. Amy, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Doc Brown is in the house. We always pause to to note when Jim Harrell is here because we are honored by his presence among everyone else coming in. We're just going to hit this button once or twice more. A couple of things on housekeeping as we get going. In a minute, we're going to start playing with what you see so that you can get off of the Brady Bunch tile scheme as much as I loved that show growing up watching the reruns. Um, but uh, that means if you don't touch anything, you'll see folks like a TV show. If you'd like to get back to Brady Bunch, you are certainly welcome to, but the second you touch it, I lose my ability to kind of do those things on the back for you specifically and go from there. We do have the chat up and running today. So uh, if you have a question or run into a snag, hit Jen and I in there and we will do our best to assist you. The plan right now is similar to a lot of town halls that we've done is we're going to say hello, remind you that the conference is coming up. I think I only have to remind you like 10 more times before the end of this. Just kidding. I won't do that. Registration opened uh, yesterday and a newsletter is going out today. The cool part for folks who uh, register and register is as much as uh, filling out the online form and saying invoice me. We're going to honor uh, our 2023 registration rates for the next 30 days. So um, we'd like to encourage you. We're thrilled we can do it. We're never, you know, we're trying to do everything we can with the pricing to get as many folks because it's family and all of that. But that's going on. Um, so happy to help. And if you're in a specific situation as it relates to the timing of your AP and your AR and whatnot, you know how to find me and we'll We'll make it work because we want everybody there. That's first and foremost. I've got about two after the hour and I can't stop clicking. Jim, I hate to say this. If you set a record, you come back once a month and twice in July. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I like that. Um, But here we go. Jen, what do you think? You want to get going? Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Wow. I'm, I'm just really amazed with everybody that's here. So um, I'm super appreciative of all you guys joining us um, this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're located um, for this event. We do, as you guys know, if you've attended any of our stuff, we do like to keep this fairly interactive. So we do welcome, you know, any questions or comments, please feel free um, to type those in the chat box and Todd and I will, will keep an eye on that. But you guys really did not come here to listen to me. So without further ado, I would like to thank our guest. I actually um, we need one more ado. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. The one thing Would I do you... want to mention in keeping with past practices and in conversation with Jim, we are going to record the first part of today just so that you know Jim's comments and general thoughts that he wanted to make sure he shared. He's been kind enough to suggest that we record it so we can share it as widely within the community. When we get to the point of a more open discussion, we're going to keep with our norms of stopping the recording to encourage a free flow of conversation with the idea that, you know, we're, we're, we're a community talking off the record, answering questions and whatnot from there. So we appreciate everybody approaching today with that in mind. Sorry, Jen. Nope, your worries. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, so what I would like to do then is go ahead and introduce Mr. Jim Penrod. We are so happy to have him joining us today. He has been with AAVSB since 2015 and is currently their chief executive officer. He's, however, been in the licensure world for over 30 years, and we really are so pleased to have him joining us today to discuss everything um, VTNE. Also, just as a side note, we're also going to welcome him live and in person um, in Houston at our annual conference conference. So that's another thing to look forward to. And now I will pass it off to Jim Penrod. Thanks, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Um, 
You know, one of the things I know we're here to talk about is the VTNE eligibility process and the changes that we recently announced. And so I just wanted to walk through a bit of how that occurred and the process that happened to get us to this place. Um, in 2010, we uh, introduced a new eligibility policy for the VTNE. At that time, the board of directors um, did their due diligence, talked to all the member boards, stakeholders, those kinds of things, um, and uh, created a policy that required candidates that took the VTNE to either be a graduate of an accredited program or having been approved by a state board um, if they had an alternate pathway that was built into their legislation or into their statutes. And um, so we received a letter uh, this past summer from nine of our member boards. It went to the president of the organization and it asked us to revisit, asked the board of directors to revisit that policy. Some of the impetus for that, I think, is you know the shortage of veterinary professionals uh, in this country, in North America, and just how we could get them into the licensure pathway a little bit faster. Uh, and so the board uh, instructed uh, my staff to develop what we call a mega issue backgrounder. And what we do is in that process, we ask uh, or answer four questions and provide the results of those questions uh, to our board of directors for deliberation and debate. So the questions are, what are the needs, wants, and preferences of our members and other stakeholders who are interested in this issue? The second question is, what is changing in the environment around us that may impact this decision? The third one, what's uh, the strategic position of our organization as well as the capacity to make any changes? And then finally, what are any ethical considerations that we need to be aware of when we make a decision? Um, so we gathered a lot of information. We've got information from, from you, from your association. We got uh, some letters from a number of uh, veterinary technology schools. We received um, some information from others interested in this issue, like NAVTA, other groups like that. Um, in September, we have our annual meeting, and we uh, devoted two sessions during our annual meeting uh, with our executive directors and registrars to actually discuss this issue and learn from them directly what was uh, their interests in changing the policy uh, and what was uh, the things that we needed to, to consider. Um, some of those things that came up were uh, alternate pathways that are existing in statutes um, in many states, or in some states at least. Uh, and as you may or may not know, statutes are uh, established by the legislature, very difficult to change, could be a multi-year process. So we wanted to consider that, obviously. We wanted to consider the uh, um, information from your association, from other associations, from your schools, you know, um, what was important for us to think about as we as we decided on a, a new pathway forward. And through that process, we created some documentation around it, shared all the letters that we received with our board of directors, and then came up with several different alternatives. You know, we could limit the test to only accredited graduates. That caused some problems, obviously, with those states that already have a alternate pathway in, in their legislation. Um, things like that though, and, and we talked through the issue and the board of directors made a recommendation. Well, actually they, they um, spent some time talking about this. And then in November, they met face to face and they asked us to provide, uh, to gather some additional information for the staff to reach out to um, CBTEA and to CVMA and get some information from those two organizations on the preferences that they had around this particular issue. So we did receive letters from each of those organizations and provided that to the board of directors 
uh, at their next meeting, they uh, made a recommendation for a change with two major changes to the existing policy. So the first one is one of the learnings that we uh, received from our member boards was the administrative process for um, approving these candidates that had alternate pathways was very difficult for them in some ways. They had to come online and do that themselves. So the board of directors uh, de uh, decided that our staff could take on that administrative workload. We're not opening up the um, eligibility to you know different pathways or alternate pathways. We're simply taking over the administrative processing for those states that already have some sort of alternate pathway in their legislation or their rules. Uh, the second major change is that when we received that letter from our member boards, one of the things that they asked the board to consider was the idea of allowing candidates to take the exam prior to receiving their degree, you know, prior to graduation. We had about four states at the time that uh, have that in place. And um, we received some data on pass rates from those particular uh, states, as well as some information we received from some of the schools that allow candidates to take the exam prior to graduation. And actually what we heard from some of the California schools was their um, uh, candidates who are in the program in the final semester of their programs actually had a higher pass rate than if they uh, took the exam, you know, months after they graduated. I think it's just retaining the information they learned during school, perhaps. Uh, so all those things were considered, but that was the second change, which would allow candidates to take the exam in the last semester of their education if the school felt that they were ready to do that. And so um, this is a process that we're continuing to work through. We're uh, reaching out to our member boards to, to determine you know, the requirements, especially for those states that have alternate pathways. And then uh, we will reach out to this group to understand how you can help us provide the list of candidates who would be eligible, who are ready to take the exam, perhaps before they graduate. Um, there's no way that we can uh, control that. It would be something that you would have to tell us if a candidate is ready to take the exam prior to graduation. And I think that depends on your program. You know, each of your programs is a little different. And so um, we will definitely um, look at in the future, gathering more information about pre-graduate uh, versus post-graduate so that we can demonstrate what the pass rates are for those particular groups to see if there's any impact, any difference from those particular groups. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, we are in the process, my staff of working through the details. And uh, you know, as you can imagine, there's a number of details, a number of groups that we need to talk to. Uh, we don't anticipate any change in the existing process at least through this year, and probably um, thinking about changing in the beginning of 2025. And so um, nothing's going to happen immediately. Uh, and we want to make sure that, you know, we have these opportunities to talk with the ABTE members and understand your concerns, the process issues, how we can best support your needs as we move forward in this process. So that's really the the reason that things change um, and be happy to answer any other questions about sort of that process or where we go from here. <laughs>